you know that Africa is the number one. Yeah, education is generally good, like getting educated. But what happens, though, is the question. So right now, uh, Africa is the most fertile continent on the planet, right? So I'll say, I hear you what you're saying. I'll say, I'm going to leave that there. I like what you said. So I'm going to come back to that. So Africa is the most fertile place on the planet, right? Now, the powers that be, Bill Gates and the Melinda Foundation, they said they need to figure out how to slow this down because there's too many Africans having babies and not enough white people having babies. This is the reality, right? Don't get mad. That's just the facts. So what's happening, they said, wait a minute. How do we start to slow these things down? Now, one thing that they said to slow it down was to educate the women. So I had to think to myself, like, man, why would educating the women slow down the fertility and the production of more families? Just, I just want y'all to, I want to ask y'all why would that be a method, right, of population control? Why would education be a method? We're not talking about the V right now. Let's talk about something. We're not going to go in that direction. Why would education, because I got a whole breakdown and I've done a whole study and a list of things that can be utilized to stop it. But why was education one of them? Right? So it goes towards um, my later question that I pose. If women have houses, whether using it as an intelligent investment vehicle to build up assets, that is a beautiful and a great thing. But let's say that that man, or and specifically, I'm not just talking about women now because I always talk about the fellas. So let's say that that woman gets a house. She is single. She gets in that house. She doesn't have babies because she's educated and she believes that her career takes place of what that family can give her. Instead, she is deep, right, within the depth of her ambitions, Right. And nowadays, more women believe in like abortion and birth control than they believe in like, you know, population and, 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 and like, you know, having a baby and having a family. So if she has a baby or she has a house, she has a job, she has a great career, beautiful life. But then if she doesn't produce a child or she doesn't adopt a black child, then who can she pass down her wealth to? And I remember, I'm just talking about women for now. So it's not the fact that these two dynamics don't exist within men and women. So I'm just focused on this aspect of the conversation right now. So what happens? So you get a society where the education masculates the women. They then become their own breadwinners. They have no dependency outside of self and no particular necessity for the men that are a part of their society. And they objectify the men for pleasure, right? Or maybe bounce of intimacy, but not in particularly to start a family and to play a, a position within that family to help raise those children. And that the home is a base where that is the school, that is the farm, that is the nurturing center that develops the minds of the next generation that fosters in a new nation. So it's an interesting question. Now I want to get to it because some women say, well, I got a career and I got two babies. Right. And I actually I would love to hear from you because I got I want to take a consensus of thought. I'm not telling anybody anything. Right? I want to hear it. And then you have exceptions to the rule. And then you have what is the overall context of what's happening here. And so somebody said, but then you have women that create balance of education and family and men are delivering. I want to hear from that perspective. Right? And then, fellas, I want to hear from, like, do you believe that you attracted to the modern-esque woman. Do you still believe that this woman 
in the way that she sculpts herself, right? And particularly with her career, do you find a, a career woman, that aspect of her life, do you find that attractive? I want to know from the fellas because sometimes we put things on each other without actually asking questions and getting context. And to understand from the other, we just project. Men project onto women, women project onto men. Right? So it's like at some point in time, men have to listen to women and women have to listen to men to get a real understanding. Right? So, fellas, yes or no? Because there's some beautiful uh, career women, business women that are out there. But is the fact that she is successful in her career may make her less attractive to you because her career would need that, that amount of love that you want. She might have to put that into her career. So we talk about balance a lot on here and I don't think balance is the key. I think abundance is the key. I think we need abundance of love. We need abundance of time. We need abundance of energy. I talked about balance last time. Balance leaves you at the teetering path of negative and positive. Where you anything you do at balance, like a bank account, is at zero. Where it's like, oh, I'm balancing this thing, but it has to be abundance. See, when we start talking about balance in family life and work life, then that's when we're robbing ourselves of the opportunity to create wealth. Because wealth is when you have an abundance, right? It's a difference. So you have to understand when we use that word balance, we're not talking about wealth. So we have to get that. Now, some women say men get intimidated. So that's an interesting perspective, right? So what is it from a, a woman's perspective? What is it that you believe intimidates a man? Because I hear this word intimidation being thrown around a lot as well. And then I hear the idea of low-value men. But that comes from what is a low-value woman then? And what is a high-value woman? That's what I want to talk about. Let's, let's forget about this high-value men conversation because I know y'all learning from a stylist in Atlanta. Now, that's some bullshit, right? But, and, and don't get me wrong, bro, be having some perspectives, but that ain't what the world need. I want to know what is a high-value woman because that's what we really need to focus the conversation around. Men tend to not like women making more money than them. That's an interesting conversation. You know, I ain't never had a problem with a woman making a lot of money myself. Because I always figure she, I'm going to make money too. And then shoot, if she got money, she can invest in what I got going on. And then we can build together and we can triple, quadruple, 10x, 100x the money we got together. So I ain't never, I, I ain't never get that part. That ain't never been no issue. Now, I ain't never needed a woman for no money or nothing like that just because, you know, I'm big keys. But at the end of the day, I want to know. Ladies, I need somebody to come in here and give me some game. I need y'all to press request. Press one if you're willing to come in here and give me some game on your perspective on what's a high-value woman. I really want to know for a second. I got a lot of some time because my videographer late. Anybody willing to come in here? It could be multiple y'all women come in here and give me a perspective. I want to know what is a high value woman. Damn, no, okay. Look, coach, coach ain't afraid. She's ready to come in. That's what's up, man. Y'all regular. Okay, I'm an extraordinary human being. I ain't gonna call myself regular. You understand? I'm an extraordinary human being. But I want to know. I'm gonna have to do this on the podcast. We're about to talk about. I value women. That's what I want to know. Listen, I'm, I'm enjoying this conversation. And like I said, I'm a mother, so I have children. And I rush to get to you. Hi, everybody joining. A high value woman. I am, let's see, I'm a veteran. I'm 30 plus, three kids. My husband was also a veteran. So it took a lot for me to learn how to nurture our relationship. Like you said, in abundance, but... When you had moments, it takes a high value woman to see, okay, 
yes, you may be going through something, but we don't have to be aggressive. We do have to communicate. We do have to see a person for where they are and who they are. It's very important. Well, look, can I can I stop you for a second first? I want yeah. you to give you if you can give me uh, a description, traits, characteristics, if you will, of what a high value woman is, if it's possible for you to explain it. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Of a high value woman, for myself, my opinion, not of Key's opinion, my opinion, she's going to carry herself with class. She's going to carry herself with dignity. Yes, she's going to have an education. She's going to know how to manage being an educated woman and not an egotistical woman. She's going to move with confidence, great confidence within herself, within her surroundings, within the things that she says from her heart. We don't always have to respond, per se, to, to certain things like... I don't know if you want to get into it. Khloe Kardashian and Tristan. Khloe Kardashian is not a high value woman, although she's a very paid woman. She All right, so, allow so let me stop you there. All right, so the context of let me ask you this question there. So I want to yeah. I want to get polarized. So what is a high value man to you, right? So we know the conversation has went around high value man based on yeah. right uh, 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 their status in society, the money that they make, things of that nature. And we know that right. most women look for a man that make money, has the ability and the willingness to provide, right? right? Um, that is a leader, right? That is seen as valuable in society, things of that nature. So that's like high value man, right? And then, so I wanna establish, right? A, a, a societal standard on what's a high value woman because it goes beyond the characteristics of like just being a good person, right? Because that's just normal, right? Being a right. good person. But so if we're talking about high value, that'd be those who are considerably, you know, um, uh, uh, more attractive, right, than the others. So, right. and, and people say it's personal, but we create standards for men. So I want to know what's a societal standard for women, because I don't think it's personal. I think it's societal. What makes a man valuable as a societal established thing. Man, no, we have to have money. So like, what is the opposite of like having money for a woman and where women consider themselves valuable? For me, like I said, I'm a veteran, I, I have children. My value for my husband doesn't come from my money. It comes from me nurturing our children, teaching our children, loving one another. It comes Teacher, from- Teacher, a nurturer. Absolutely, lover. absolutely. I, now, I do a lot about in what capacity, right? All right, so a woman that's a teacher, because I want to, I really just want to get to some, yeah. some valid points. So a woman that's a teacher, absolutely. Um, so a she nurturer. has that knowledge. So a knowledgeable woman. So absolutely. we can add that on there. Um, she has to have a nurturing spirit. Absolutely. All right, which those require her to be feminine in possession, right? right. Um, she has to be loving. Please right? be loving. Tender, tender. I'll do the utmost. Yes. Okay, yes. so. That's where I wanted to get to some real fine points on, all right, a person being able to consider themselves, you understand me, of a high value caliber. Now, what do you say? So, like, men don't really grade women by their money. And I think that's where a lot of women get it confused to that point where women who have money almost try to be intimidating because they think people are. But if a man really don't care about a woman's money, not if a man has it himself, but he's just not looking for that unless a man is a homosexual. That's different. You understand me? So I, I, I really want to get to a foundational understanding, right, for men and women to grade themselves. Absolutely. Right? And I really think men and women should journal really we're human at the end of the day we're all human yeah you might say you know women follow this and men follow that but we're all human and i really feel like service to one another service oh. to each other service really plays a part in your character you service us through these lives it's a part of your character oh. all right so let me, hold on. let me thank you good sister first of all i, I appreciate yeah. you for no bringing problem, it people. so I got the sister so and the young brother down educator. there. I, You're a licensed educator, so I'm good sister. Educator. I'm before I bring you up, before I bring you up, I got the young brother, man. The young brother said something in the comments. He said, stop teaching NFTs. What's your perspective, young brother? You hear me? 
Don't let really it come first of all. You talking to me? All right, Don't let like I wanted to hear your perspective on this first. Uh, I wanted, yeah. I wanted you to educate me first, so that's why I came on here. How you want me to educate you if you told me to stop teaching me? Right. Good point. Sister, what do you think? What do you think of this capitalistic approach to NFTs and preaching? All right, I just wanted to see if you was a troll or not. Right. Uh, All right, so anyway, good sister. Yeah. Uh, listen, y'all, I choose Biden's the whole year, so just, I'm, just don't complain. I'm so happy about your but, NFT. But, I believe oh, that you are. I'm sorry. I apologize for talking to you. No, go ahead. I, I, so I wanted to hear your perspective on what you believe a high value woman is. Okay. Well, I can speak from everything you said because you, we come from man, right? And so when y'all created us, you know what you wanted. Facts, facts, first of all. And you said everything correctly. A, a high value woman should be a teacher first because her job is to her children and to her husband, right? initially yeah. right that was her first role so woman has should always go back to her first role and she came to man to nurture him so her job is for man first and for one a, a, a high value woman knows that her job is for her man and whatever mm -hmm. that man needs from her she's going to be able to provide it seamlessly completely fully okay that's a high value woman. A, a man will never have to worry about his woman. And that piece that a high value woman brings is way more than money. It's way worth more than money. It's worth more than time because peace gives you So time. can you give me, not to cut you off, can you give me a, a characteristic? Yes, she's, she's kind. She's going to be happy. She's going to be joyful. And because she has her own mind, because a woman came here to be separate from man, but also to be from man. So she's going to be able to do so many things that are going to give her joy, peace. I mean, I get what you. I, I know the yeah. the comments keep saying we came, we came from men. I get what uh I get what you're trying to say, but I understand uh -huh. why the was with that idea because you know I definitely came from a woman, but right. I understand what you're, what you're saying. Right, but there's feminine. Well, we came from men and women coming together. Yeah. You understand? Because at the end of the day, I do be hearing a lot of people talk about women used to be able to have babies without men, but I don't know nobody that can That's do that. That's not true. Um, no, it's, it's not it's men true. And women. But I don't want to get into that science conversation right now. Okay, please, I, I really just that. Um, that would be just very wanted scary. to talk about the initial conversation because that's a whole other subject of hella different things. Because we always try to find what separates us. I want to I want to have common knowledge. That's, yeah. Um, okay. mm -hmm. So you know, the, the reason I'm trying to get to this point because oftentimes when we know what we want from the opposite sex, but we don't uh -huh. have standards for ourselves that we hold up for ourselves. You understand Correct. me? And this is why we Correct. don't have a lot of accountability and why it's hard for us to build families nowadays. We know what we dislike in the opposite sex more than what we know what we like, which is why we have the ability to dog and talk about toxicity but we can't talk about what's healthy right so i want us to start remedying and i think the good sister said it like writing this down on right. what we actually believe are good traits within ourselves that will qualify us because some people don't realize that they unqualified for the person that they're going after right and oh. that they shouldn't because you haven't met to meet any qualities you understand me to where you should even be disrupting this person that you consider to be a value. Sometimes you just got to observe right. from a distance. You right. understand me? It's like a brother that knows that he doesn't mm -hmm. have anything going on, right? Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to mess with this sis that do got a lot going on? Right. You don't have nothing to give her. You don't have nothing right. to provide for. You don't have a vision. None of those right. things. So, so both those it things fall on each deceptive. other. It's deceptive if a man is actually very deceptive for a man to come into a woman's life like you said without having the proper qualities just by well it's deceptive alone. on both ends is what i said it's deceptive okay. on a woman's end as well so That's because right. you know i think society does a very good job nowadays at telling men what they should and shouldn't do and right? putting that out there but women never have a list of items that they should or shouldn't do 
Right. So I think that anytime you get a conversation that's lopsided, it's always going to leave somebody doing something wrong because they feel like they're better than the other. So there's narcissism that exists in the spectrum of men and women. There's ego that exists in the spectrum of men and women. But right. usually in society, because we live in a patriarchal society, we only deal with, right, the, the masculine aspect of it. We don't deal right. with the feminine aspect. So right. without dealing with it, men don't know how to deal with what's feminine in them, and women don't know how to deal with conquering and mastering their own femininity. So I mm. think that that's a conversation that needs to be mm -hmm. continuously had. But I appreciate you coming on and sharing perspective with us, though, good sister. Thank you. You're bringing a lot of wisdom here, and I appreciate you bringing that conversation here as well. You're exactly right. Appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm really, you know, trying to get to a, a, a understanding myself of um, how we see ourselves and sort of just asking real questions. You understand me? It's not even 100% my perspective, because I think that a lot of these topics, we, we hate people for sound bites. And we don't even get to a point where we can break down a full dialogue and stretch out something in long term, in long form, rather. And I learned that through if you take a, a, a clickbait of a um, you take a clickbait of a conversation I'm having with somebody, you take one piece out, man, the people is running through the comments with all kind of hate, but they didn't watch the full context and what was shared. And then I also think that there's certain things that are just not asked in society because it makes one or the other comfortable or doesn't go along with the narrative. You understand me? But I think the narrative is mostly bullshit. And if the narrative is not creating more success and more progress, then the narrative is toxic in the first place, meaning that it's poison, that it's not good for it. You understand me? Um, and I think that that's something that we need to change. Men need to be able to look in the mirror and women need to be able to look in the mirror. Right? I think that uh, society has done a terrible job uh, at helping women curate and become more self-aware in a lot of perspectives. I think that society is doing a better job at helping women be self-aware when it comes to right uh, sexual liberation and careers and ambitions right in certain positions in society. But I think from a mental health range and a becoming more of a um, comprehensively uh, or, or spiritual and feminine woman, I don't think society does any curation of that whatsoever almost besides those who are of that spiritual community. You understand me? And those who do have sister circles that allow you all to have those conversations. But it's like with every community that forms um, and starts to form and gain power, most of the things happen internal, right? And so it's like the LGBT community don't all agree with each other, but their disagreements are internal. So they don't let the rest of the world see them break ranks on what's toxic inside of their internal conflicts. On the outside, there's a brand of it. Oh, pride and happiness and freedom and love and everybody's love is love. But on internal, they, they conflicts, they don't agree with each other on a lot of different things. It's the same thing with the Asian community, the Jewish community. You understand me? The white community now be showing conflict. Of course, they go to civil war with each other these days. But they also can agree on things, you understand me, about white power and, and, and race and having power and things of that nature. And then you got the women community who have now formed based on the basis of their gender, right? And so a lot of the internal things are not being had. And I think it can become destructive in some capacities rather than constructive. You understand me? When we don't deal with the things as we make and change. So we got to deal with our own shit as we shovel somebody else's in their face. Because at the end of the day, the basis, if it's not around black family, I don't care about the individual progress. I don't care about the individual moves. Because then we just training ourselves to be like white men in society. Well, I get successful. I get my career. I get my money. I have my ambitions. Then I'm good. And it starts to become like, it's not that you're trying to get rid of the structures of capitalism or patriarchal society, it's that you want a higher position in it, right? Um, and then that destroys the functionality, right, of us being attracted to ourselves, meaning that men and women being, and, and, and uh, black men and women being attracted to each other. So what makes a black woman go seek outside her race to go find somebody else is that, 
she lost the look for qualities, right? And because of the trauma in between that she's had with the relationships in between, the propaganda and all those things, she no longer believes those qualities exist inside her race. She can no longer see it. Same thing what a black man does. He starts to seek qualities. He say, well, the white woman is, is more submissive, right? Less questioning to him and, and, and things of that nature. And he stops associating those qualities with his woman. And then he becomes weakened because he doesn't want to go through the process of disciplining, strengthening himself, right? That allows him to grow into becoming a greater and better man, which is what a black woman does. A black woman goes sharpen you. She gonna make sure you are who you say you are. And she not gonna allow you to come in with the bullshit. And other races of women might not be able to challenge you in that same capacity because they don't share the same perspective, right? Of growing up in reality. And they don't share the same perspective of your own potential. They don't have it in their DNA to understand that. So it's, it's an interesting conversation because if we challenge men to grow back into their masculinity, we have to challenge women to grow back into their feminine nature, right? One without the other is lopsided. But today's society is challenging women to become more masculine, right? And challenging men to be more feminine. You understand me? And it destroys the attraction to each other. You understand me? And then we replace the concepts of family with career. And so when we look at the fact that our population size decreases in America every year, why is it that? We had high feet condition. You understand? We our our sperms our sperms are working, but we have a high amount of contraceptive and birth control and abortion and a multitude of other different things that we do in our culture to kill life because we're not really trying to reproduce ourselves. And you have to think about where that mentality comes from when a culture no longer wants to reproduce itself. It's literally saying that that culture doesn't have love for itself. Because when you love yourself, you want to reproduce it. When you love something so much, you need to have more of it, abundance. You appreciate. And that appreciation is the growth in value. But we stop loving ourselves. So, no, nah, you don't want to have a baby. No, nah, you don't want to have a family. No, nah, you don't want to produce more men or more women like you or more black men, or don't want to produce more black women. You understand me? Somebody said, name one thing that has made black men feminine. They say skinny jeans. No, nah, it's not just about that. It's the characteristics that have been lost within a black man. It's the traits that have been lost, his willfulness, his ambition, his, his, his willingness to be a protector and a provider and a producer, right? Uh, 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 and to be productive and to be a leader. Those are the qualities. You're talking about aesthetics and, and, and really aesthetics and fashion. Those things flip-flop as far as what's acceptable and what's masculine and what's not. Because in Africa, yes, you can wear a, 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 a long guard um, and um, it doesn't have any pants like in European and that's considered to be masculine over there but feminine over here. So context matters. So each generation gets the context what is masculine and what is feminine based on what's associated with the characteristics, right, and of the style that's being presented, right? So that's different. If we grew up and only the gangsters was wearing skinny jeans, we would associate that with being masculine, right? But I mean, you know, they did bell bottoms and all kind of stuff in the 70s, and them brothers were still masculine. So it's not so much about the clothing that's being worn, but the characteristics that have been lost. And this is where people start to look at things from a shallow standpoint, right? And so I'm gonna handle this too. They said, uh, uh, I'm Islam, a man is not supposed to wear gold. You said, I'm Islam, I don't know about that because I definitely know that the women ain't supposed to have their legs out too. But at the end of the day, I told y'all before, man, you know, uh, peace of Prophet Muhammad, you understand me? But at the end of the day, I don't follow out of rituals in that capacity. You understand me? Gold, I drink gold. I wear gold. I'm going to get those particles in my skin and within my body. 
You understand me? So, cut the BS. But anyway, we're going to get back to it. Um, We have to understand these things from deeper bases and deeper levels. You understand me? So women are being forced to be more masculine. Um, men are being forced to be more feminine. You understand me? And both of these things are associated with them fitting more into society and the narrative that goes, especially if you know this future melanin month, so we got to talk about the vision of society. If you will have a vision for society, it has to have a healthy, divine, masculine presentation of men that conduct themselves as such. You understand me? And it's the same thing with women. So it's like when I started studying this population control thing, I understood that a lot of things that's implemented in our society are social programmings. Listen, man, if you're going to be hypocritical and point something out, I'm going to point it back at you. I choose violence, so don't play with me. You understand me? Point out your own insecurities and issues and problems that consist within your day and your life. Do not try to learn something to point it out to somebody else to have them see themselves if you never stop to see yourself. So you can't be doing something hypocritical in your own profile picture and then try to ask me about wearing gold. And being a Muslim means one who submits his or his, her will to do the will of God, being good, following that golden rule, being righteous, treating your brother and sister how you want to be treated. You understand me? So if you don't want me to check you, don't try to come check me. So at the end of the day, that's checkmate. So... We, we get to that point where it's like, you know, yeah, Kissinger had a report in 1974 talking about that he was going to use homo, uh, uh, homosexuality as a method for sterilization. That's, this is a fact. I didn't create it. He created that. So you're talking about higher ups in the government having these positions. You're talking about the fact that by 2025, there will be more deaths than births in a white community. But what about ours? Why do we choose to follow death? Why do we choose to follow death? Right? And I think that um, a lot of women and a lot of men, you understand me? Um, Come on, don't don't come. I'm gonna I'm gonna block you too if you ask unintelligent questions without research. Somebody say no shade. Do Muslims believe in stoning females? Go do your research, and please leave the ignorance out the chat. That's, just leave the ignorance out the chat. Let's just do that. You know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I'm gonna just hit you with the song that the young brother put out there, Toby and Gwingwe, about just unfollow me if that's the case, right? But I'm not asking, and people say that there's no such thing as a dumb question. I think that was true up until the point where we got the internet and we got Google. So I think that there are dumb actors who ask questions when they could do research. And when we know things go against our logic, why would we continue to progress in that thought pattern? And we know that the logic is you've never seen a black Muslim ever stone a black woman. You've never seen that happen. You've never seen that happen in America, nowhere. How many, there are, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. So how many cases do you see that in the world? So I really want us to get smarter because you may not even have had bad intentions, but because of your frequency, you haven't learned to grow out of the immaturity, right? Uh, 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 of not doing research and investigating and being a real true seeker so that when you present things to people, you thought 20 times before you type or before you speak. So I'm not going to block them. I'm going to let them carry themselves out unless they get disrespectful. But that goes to the point, though, man. We have a society where we don't really think about things beyond the surface level. So it's like, I want to see black men grow into a greater level of development, and I know what I have to do to help and assist in that. I have to go back into what I used to do, and I have to do more training. You understand I me? Mean, we, we go through the operation of military training because a lot of men know how to be warriors, but they don't know how to be soldiers. And we need more soldiers today than anything. We need more soldiers. See, the difference between a warrior and a soldier, right, in my contemplation of thought, 
and this is not the full context of what a warrior is, but for uh, the, the purpose of compare and contrast. See, a warrior is more so the, the, the one with the, the long hair, grows it out. And he connects himself to the surroundings and the environment. And intuitive and instinctual. And a warrior can be more individual on his journey or his jihad or his war, right? The warrior has his own way. So the warrior is not particularly taking orders from anybody. The soldier is different. The soldier empties himself. It's not about the soldier. The soldier takes orders. The soldier understands that the internal struggle he has is submission, but he learns to submit himself in order for them to be able to win the war. The soldier listens to the best plan, listens to hierarchy, listens to authority, listens to the general. When there's somebody that can lead you better than you can lead yourself, that's the general, so you listen to the general. But men no longer want to play the soldier role. I was always taught submission is power. And I used to think about the submission word, like, damn, man, submission is weak. Like, I'm listening to somebody else. Why don't I just listen to myself? But then I realized, no, submission is power, right? Because it takes more power to submit to somebody else than it does to rebel. And so when you have a true cause that you're willing to kill, die, you understand me, and fight for, then you will submit in order for the cause which is bigger than you to be one because the individual always think they know better. That's what the young man's mind is the rebel. So when you go to the army, they make you shave. You got to get a buzz cut. It's uniformity. Everybody look the same. So it destroys the individuality so that you understand that, look, we are the same here. When you get an order, you follow whether you like it or not because you might not be able to see the bigger picture. And so when we learn how to be soldiers and play our roles until, and then sometimes a soldier may have to play a role, but he may be fitted to be a general one day, but just not in that position, not at that time. You understand me? And black men these days, especially younger black men, y'all just want to be warriors. Y'all just want to do your own thing. Don't want to listen to nobody. You understand me? Don't want to take no advice at all. Don't want to work for nobody. Don't want to follow nobody. Even if they lead you in the right direction, you feel like you need to get it all from yourself. That you got your own warrior's way. And ain't had no battles, but your own internal ones, but ain't truly battled with the war, the world. See, the general is usually going to be that smart one that can devise a plan that got some experience. The general ain't the same soldier that's in the streets. The general will be putting it on the paper. He draws it up and then delivers it to the soldiers, and the soldier got to follow out the blueprint. But if you can't get the soldiers to just follow orders and to empty themselves to take in what's necessary, then it's going to be so much internal conflict. Y'all be fighting for uh, fighting amongst yourselves while the enemy is taking over the camp. The enemy winning the war. And that's how it is in our culture. Everybody is warriors against each other. Black men take all their warrior spirit and we hunt each other. We kill each other. We down each other. We fight each other. And so... In the 80s and 90s, there were generals. But America knew that if they took out the generals, then we'd leave a culture of warriors, all these tribes just fighting and killing each other. You understand me? So we have to get back to a place where we become soldiers because we at war right now. And so imagine this. I tell the young soldiers, I say, young soldier, I need you to do this, that, and the third. This is what's going to get your life together. And the soldier said, well, I ain't going to lie. I don't feel like, whoa, this ain't got nothing to do with your feelings, young man. It ain't got nothing to do with your feelings, young guy. I said, do it, you do it. Take your feelings out of it. Where they're going to be like, uh, be empathetic. Talk to him a certain way. What you mean, talk to him a certain way? I said, do it, get it done. Why do I got to say it a certain way so his feelings, no. Nah. In, the, in the army, they make sure they got nothing to do with your feelings. They wake up yelling to you, get up, soldier. Sir, yes, sir. Complete submission. Because you know how dangerous that is on a battlefield? You tell a person to do something, that's hella dangerous. We always operated with the one spokesman rule. 
It could be 10 of us. There should be one spokesman talking at a time. Otherwise, y'all goddamn arguing amongst yourselves. We get into it with the police. I tell the homies that back in the day. Police pull up on us, man. It was in St. Louis, man. They had, man, they as crooked as a leaning piece of tower, man. You know talking about? So we knew that. It was like, nah, I'll be like, let me talk. Don't somebody else say something, because then it'd be like, oh, nah, nigga, you didn't say something. You fucking up the game. I was going to goddamn get everybody smooth. But your emotions had you, your ego had you feeling a certain way. You didn't uh, uh, heighten the situation when I was smoothing it out so we can continue upon our mission. Because it ain't about the way you feel. But everybody being their feelings. And so it's like nowadays you try to talk to people and that, well, I don't feel this certain way. Well, you talk to them a certain way. You didn't say it. You didn't regard their feelings. This is how they think. No, be a goddamn soldier. Listen, take heed, follow the orders, get the results. So if I could literally tell all black men in America and give them command and the order of what they do, bro, I need you to study this. And then I need you to go execute on this. Guess what? Their life would improve times 10. But see, they want to follow themselves and they're not a good enough general to lead themselves in the right direction because they lack experience. They lack the mental fortitude to get over their own emotions to manage themselves. That's why some people have to go to the army to become disciplined. You become disciplined. You get in the army, you become disciplined. Now you can goddamn listen, take instructions. That's the power. You know what I'm talking about? So if men don't know how to submit to each other, don't know how to submit to God, don't know how to submit to each other, and then when you get in a household, you want a woman to submit to you. How? You don't submit to a higher authority. So how all of a sudden you want that chain of command in your household? I'm just saying. You got to think about that for a second. You don't submit to nothing. But you want your woman to submit to you you are already creating a hypocritical circumstance. So she can't follow that because she, she just following you at this point. Well, you don't submit, I won't submit. You want to know what's a high value man, a man that's a to God, a man that's a to the inner God within himself, a man that's a to right over wrong, to duty. You want to know if a man loves himself, he got to submit to some sort of duty. Then he has a vision that he submits to. Oh, baby, I submitted to God's vision. This is what I got to do. This is my purpose. And then as long as you're following that, she can submit to you because she's helping you along with your submission to God. So y'all are both following along the right path. But the moment that you can't submit to nobody, oh, well, shit, nigga, what the fuck I'm going to listen to you, nigga. You a renegade, I'm a renegade. We both warriors in this game. You understand me? Submission is power. It takes more power. You know how much you have to get over to submit and follow an order? It's easy to be like, man, fuck these niggas. I don't listen to nobody, man. Do my own thing. You be all in your feelings thinking you gangster, thinking you right. When I, I used to drill, for 20 years I think I've drilled. We, had, we, we went to a Muslim school, a private school, but we had to drill in the hot summertime. We didn't have no summers off. Sometimes the drill instructor will be our age or a little older. And I hated having to submit. Like, man, why the hell he get the drillers? Now he said, left feet, right feet, march time, march. How you feel? I got to say, fine, sir. And this brother is no older than me. But what it learned, it taught me respect for black men. See, you've never been in a position where you truly got to respect.